test, test, test. Are we live, baby? Are we live? We got something cool today. Hopefully. Hopefully this goes the way I planned it in my head. And if you're watching this as a re I recommend you skip it. But today what we're going to be doing is breaking down the song structure for sync licensing. Now, I've gone over how to structure beats for sync licensing in the past. But we're going over today how to structure your actual songs. We're going to be breaking down an actual song that I produced, that I mixed, I had a vocalist record on, I mastered it. I'm going to be breaking down every detail and the intention behind all the decisions that were made for the actual track. So I'm hyped to get started with this one because I get a lot of people uh, who come in for like the YouTube videos that I have about how to structure beats. A lot of people always ask, how do you structure the actual uh, songs? Like, how do you structure songs though? Is there a difference? So there's a minor difference. It's not too different than probably how you're already making songs right now, but we want to make sure that you are uh, set up nicely. Now there's no concrete rules with this stuff. So don't think that uh, just because of what I say means this is the absolute rule for everything you do for every song you do in the future no this is just a base guideline to show you how you can increase your chances of getting your music placed because a lot of the times when i get submissions to super selective and i deny full songs it's because i don't feel like the song is syncable i don't feel like the song can get placed now there's a really fine line between saying that and thinking that your songs need to be made for sync specifically a lot of the times if you watch tv especially especially script the series they prefer songs that don't sound like sync licensing. They prefer, so they prefer songs that sound uh, songs that sound like genuine. So uh, we're gonna we're gonna show you the, the the fine line between the two because uh, as I said, there's not definitive rules, but there's definitely guidelines you can go by that can increase your chances. So let me make sure we are live. I'm gonna share the stream right now in the Discord. How's it going, Shane? Happy Friday to you as well. Happy Friday. So let me go ahead and share the stream real quick. And then we will get it started. How's everybody's week been so far? How's everybody's sync journey been so far? may not get an ad this stream most of the times I don't have them on because um, a lot of times when I do go live I'm playing other people's music so we have to you know take off monetization but today we're gonna keep it on because we're breaking down some gems all right almost ready What's up? Charismatic, my guy. All right. We got that taken care of. I'm going to close Discord so we have a little bit of memory space because I'm going to be bringing up FL Studio. Today's purpose, as I mentioned, is to break down song structure for sync licensing. Now, in the past, I have gone over in my on my channel the structure of a beat. And a lot of people have reached out and said, you know, how do you structure a song? So my goal with this stream is to give you my insight of how I notice that songs for sync usually um, place. Now, there's no, con like I said, there's no concrete rule, but there are tips that you can do that are very useful within sync licensing. Got this little AI uh, background going going up right now because, you know, we're, we're teaching today. We're, we're, we're dropping some gems. What's up, Vince Envy? 
welcome to the channel x.e.l.o is my guy i'm glad to have you in the stream for the first time all right let's get started so i have this song that i made i produced i mixed and i mastered and the top liner the vocalist is one of our artists and her name is enlight enlight music and she's a very talented songwriter based out of i believe nashville tennessee and um we collaborated on a track called fan now this song i'll let i'll play it right now I'll let you guys hear it this song is meant for moments in sync where let's say let's let's think about the movie mean girls right so let's say the girl who i think it was Lindsay lohan right the main character wanted to be cool with the popular kids right and she had like a group of friends she already had they were like the outcast and then she had the people that she wanted to be like who were the popular kids. So once she kind of switched up her style and switched up her demeanor and her identity to match more of the popular kids, she kind of brushed those outcasts to the side. And I feel like a song like this would fit perfect for a scene like that. Now, there's other scenes as well that this could fit for. You can hear the topic of the song is called fan. It's something that's very important with songs when you were songwriting for sync. I think that songs that sync the most and I think that Taylor Swift is a genius at this is keeping your songs relative and not super specific. So you're not mentioning brands. You're not mentioning companies specifically. You're not mentioning anything super specific. You're more dialing to uh, a general broad range. And those songs get placed all the time. Think about the song, Hit Me With Your Best Shot. What, ki what type of scene is Oxalm playing in most of the time? I heard that song yesterday when I was walking around uh, in Dick's Sporting Goods and Hit Me With Your Best Shot was playing. And I was like thinking like, this song is so syncable just because of that main line, hit me with your best shot. So a lot of the times when you're making songs for sync, they are fitting moments, moods, uh, settings, but you're really capturing moments. And you see that a lot, especially with like scripted series. A lot of people joke around with uh, the show, uh, what's it called? Love is Blind. When a scene will happen and then literally right after the scene, a little vocal will play of exactly what happened on that scene. So let's say that you kissed someone else and you left me. That will happen on the screen. And right after that, a song will play with that exact lyric. So a lot of the times with songs for sync licensing, they're really fitting moments. Now, it's not the case for every single placement. It's not the case for every single scene. But the, it, it is a general guideline that kind of helps you with keeping your music broad. So this is a song called Fan. We'll go ahead and play it real quick, and then we're going to start breaking it down. No audio? Dang, I'm, I'm over here embarrassed. I was over here letting it play. Let me uh, fix that real quick. Let me play it back right here while I fix this. I got you. It's okay, just admit it. Damn, I think you're a fan. Love to see me, yeah. Hate to see me win. That makes you a fan. Never miss a life. Love to see me cry. You don't understand. That makes you a fan. Looking in the mirror like nice. You can't make me cooler, I'm ice. Yeah, I shine. Rarer than diamonds. Naming my price, I'm calling me priceless. Stepping up, feeling my best. This, this place don't know what just graced them. All of my haters are shaking. Honestly, I love it for them. All eyes on me. Everyone is looking. It's okay, just admit it. Damn, I think you're a fan. Love to see me, yeah. Hate to see me. Oh. 
stalking my Instagram. You can like it if you're mad. You'll probably never see me again. But you see me again, yeah. Hi, you again. Just admit it. Damn, I think you're a fan. Love to see me, yeah. Hate to see me win. That makes you a fan. Never miss a life. Love to see me cry. You don't understand. That makes you a fan. I think you're in love with it. I think you're in love with this. I think you'll be loving me. Oh. All right. So there's moments in that song that I'm sure you guys can hear if you were like paying attention to the lyrics that could be used in different scenes. And we're going to break down some of the lyrics a little bit later. But I want to break down the entire process of this track because it started off as a beat that I posted in the community for Super Selective. And then we had a couple artists get on it. I have a version uh, of this song too by Kit Presley, who's in our uh, community. And she did a great job on this track, too. It's called Hands On Me. It's a little bit different approach than what Fan is. But I felt like Fan had really good songwriting parts that would be good for a teachable moment. So I'll break down the, the instrumental first. I'm going to ask you guys if the sound is playing for this because FL Studio already tried to play me. And it looks like it's trying to play me again because it's a little frozen. Okay, here we go. Um, make sure these are muted. And you guys let me know. I'm going to check, make sure the audio is working or get the audio working before we get this started. Uh, all right. I think this should work. Yeah, that should be good, right? A little laggy but i have i have plans for this but it paused all right i'm just gonna play the instrumental but all the parts to the track are here so you guys can see them and visualize kind of the process as you can see at the top we already have it uh mapped out as far as the structure we have a quick intro something i like to say is keep your intros between four to eight seconds long this intro is about four seconds long and then it gets immediately in the track and then we get immediately into the hook. Now, you don't always have to go into the hook at first. Sometimes what I see people do or what I've done before is put a small verse right here. So if you put the verse at the beginning uh, and it's not like a, a ballad, an emotional or cinematic ballad or some song that like kind of is building into a big conclusive ending, like an ending title song, then um, and you're just putting like a pop track or a contemporary hip hop, whatever it is, a four bar verse here is fine. And they get into your 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 hook. Now I kind of keep my hooks the same. I've always done this: hook A, hook B, hook C. Hook C is literally the entire track. So when I'm making a beat, I'm making this part first. I'm making the heaviest part of the beat first. Then I kind of break it down and structure it backwards, where I'll kind of build up to that point. So everything will be light here. Uh, and if you're if you took zero to sync, which I see some people in here, what's up, Shay, and stuff like that, um, then you know this process already. But I, this has been uh, this, this has worked for me over the times. This is what I was taught, and this is uh, something that's effective when working with. Dang, my computer's going super slow. Um, with editors, because editor is almost like a music producer of a show. I've said this before many of times. I've learned this from my mentor. His name is Russell Howard. He treats his tracks uh, catered to editors for TV shows because they like to cut different parts. They'll cut maybe this hook hey for one part of the scene and then the next part of the scene they'll put the bridge and then they'll put verse two at the next part and then they'll end it with hook C. Like they kind of structure their track in their own way according to the scene because it's not sequential to, you know, start and beginning and end of a, a track every single time. Now sometimes it is, but not every single time. What's good, Troy? Oh shit, Troy's here? What's up, TTP? Yeah, a little Timbo Spire for sure. I'm from Virginia. I was born and raised in Virginia, Woodbridge, Virginia. I live in LA now. But uh, I definitely have inspiration from Timbaland, definitely inspiration from uh, Missy Elliott, uh, Neptunes, Pharrell, all them, all them legends. So we're going to break down the beat. At the beginning, I'm teasing something that's in the track later so you can see right here if you look it says pad 
this pad is my pad that's used to support my my hooks and my pre-hook so i'm just teasing that pad at the beginning because it's a, like a catchy melody i'll play it by itself real quick actually it plays by itself already with the track i'm tripping here we go A big question I always get is like, what's the major difference between producing a, a track that's just like a, a, a beat for sync licensing and producing a track that's a beat for a singer that's used for sync licensing? And I say a lot of the times it's a lead. There's not too many leads that I use in this track. And if it is a lead melody, it's more like a counter melody that supports the vocals because you don't want too many distracting melodies going on and you want the vocal to kind of sit on top and support that part of it. Um, you know, we talk about how beats and, and sync licensing usually the dialogue is the lead vocal, but a lot of times when vocals are being used, they're not going to be used at the same time when dialogue is going on unless it's turned down a lot because it, it competes. The, the viewer gets distracted. So we don't want anything that's distracting. We want to kind of compliment what we're doing here. So we got the bounce. Uh, a lot of the things I did with this track is just layer stuff. So I use a, a cymatics uh, kicks chopped them up a little bit, added some snaps on the bottom of it, layered it with the clap, a congo loop, just keeping that bounce clean, and then the main melodies on top. So next up, we got four bars going here of the hook, and then after the hook, we got straight into our verse. <laughs> very light, very, a lot of room for dialogue here if they choose to take out the vocal. Now some libraries, like some libraries will basically have where you'll have just a hook and then like a stem, right? You'll have a stem version of this. Well, you'll have the full song will be the full mix and then they'll ask for stems where they'll have just a hook and then the, the verses are empty and that way there could be room for dialogue there. So they'll have like hook only uh, stem requests or sometimes they're called TV mixes because they'll just use the, the most important parts of the song. Um, I'm gonna show some decisions that I made too with the track because I got the reference track from In Light after I sent the beat and I kind of rearranged the beat towards her vocal. So I think that's important, like if you're a producer to like embrace the fact that you are a producer and not like the, I know there's a debate between beat maker and producer, like go ahead and visualize how you hear the song after the vocals are too. and offer to mix or master or arrange the track even more with the artist. I feel like right now, the bottom line of sync licensing is going to be captured by AI. And this is not an AI conversation that we're going to have here. We're not going to get deep into detail uh, with AI. I feel like there's enough of that already going on. Personally, I don't, I'm not really scared of what's to come. I'm just adjusting and uh, embracing the moment. So I think that everything is going to move upstream as far as quality. So we're going to have to step our games up, which is kind of why we're here. And breaking this down so um being a producer and working on songs and creating a moment with a, another artist or another creative or another producer at times i think is going to be important with these songs for sync is going to create a little bit of longevity as opposed to this fast-paced system that we're in with all this music so uh i'll show you the reference right now what she's saying and then how i kind of adjusted it too as well let me know if you guys have any questions right now so far too damn i think you're a fan Love to see me, yeah. Hate to see me win. So at the beginning, there's no vocal there. She kind of did this at right before the hook. Looking. It's okay, just admit it. One is looking. Eyes on me. Everyone is looking. It's okay, just admit it. I thought little, that little it's okay, just admit it was dope. So what I did is I introduced it at the beginning. It's okay, just admit it. So I cut that part there. I have her vocals here at the bottom. Just cut it at the beginning. Kind of arranged it, rearranged it a little bit. And then I heard, when I heard this on the hook that she did. Looking, everyone is looking. It's okay, just admit it. I added like a little sound effect and little uh, like beep sound right here. So this is what this is right here. 
on the main version. I thought it would be a cool edit point. It's okay, just admit it. Damn. Little microwave bell with a little rumble, low bass effect. Um, a little snap that layered on top of it. Just adding little effects because, like I said, editors like to cut. They can use these different sections to cut within the track. Just admit it. Damn. I think you're a fan. Love to see me, yeah. Hate to see me win. That makes you a fan. Never miss a life. Love to see me cry. You don't understand. That makes you a fan. So something that's dope that what she did, which is like a really cool uh, ear on her part, is that I added this lead right after this first hook because it was getting too repetitive. So every four bars, there's something changing. So after this first hook, or the second hook right here, it sounds very similar to the end of this first hook. So I didn't want it to be too repetitive. So right in the middle of the hook, I added a very subtle lead in the background. And that lead is only here and in this bridge. And what she did is she kind of made her own melody to that, which is dope. Love to see me cry. You don't understand. That makes you a fan. And what's sick about that is that, like I said, there's different parts of the song to cut. She she has different parts, so she says, it's okay, just admit it. It's okay, just admit it. Caught you looking. I think you're a fan. Damn, I think you're a fan. Those are three different parts that are could be relative to different types of scenes within sync. It's giving you more versatility to use your track. And I think if you're a songwriter... And the acts, like she does a really good job of doing that, like keeping it broad, keeping it relatable, keeping it useful for everyday life or everyday type of TV or, or film or whatever it is. So I think it's dope that she kind of took that little lead that I already had and used it here. And then she uses it as the outro because she doesn't say it again until the end. So we're creating different moments within the track. Uh, something I think that is important is sound, sound selection. If you guys want, I could break down, I think, some of the sounds that we used here. Um, if I can, yeah, if all. There's not too many uh, instrumentals used with this. As far as instrument VSTs used with this, I think there's like five, four with layers. I like to use a lot of presets from Splice as far as um, for Serum. So Serum has really dope presets on Splice. Our Splice has very dope presets for Serum. And uh, I, I like I really like some of these sounds that they have. That's the pad. So we want to just keep a, a eclectic type of feel. This lead, which is supposed to be like a, a like a synthy guitar type of feel. It's a little slow, so give it a second. This is also a splice preset as well. Um, we also have the kalimba, which I believe is serum, but it could be omnisphere. Omnisphere has really good kalimbas or realistic sounds. I think that if you're going to be using sounds that are sound organic, like a realistic instrument, then it's important to make sure they're high quality, especially for sync licensing. A lot of times people will try to recreate like cinematic tracks and stuff like that or recreate tracks and have like strings and stuff in them. And if they sound too stock, it always sounds, uh, it always stands out. So I think that it's important to make sure that your realistic instruments have a realistic feel to it. And then all these are just layers now. It's like a cool vintage, like Robin Thicke type of feel to it. A little staccato string. And lastly, oh, there's a couple more layers. Just the bass. Super simple layer.
So you hear how that, that last note right here is louder? It's important to the EQ that I don't think I have the EQ on because my computer cannot handle it. I have all my effects kind of muted right now. But um, EQing out that bass that sounds louder or even compressing it sometimes is, is important to make sure that it all sounds balanced. And then we have this guitar movement here. You can hear it as a scene opener? Yeah, definitely. This is just like a layer, it's just like a texture. Just guitar strumming. It's just literally just a texture layer. It keeps movement. And then I think that's it. Everything else is just like the drums. I have a couple layer snares. This is more for air. This is more for attack. All right, so now we're gonna break down a couple of the mixing decisions. We're not gonna be able to hear too much um, individually of what I did, I don't think, just because of my computer. But I mixed all her tracks. I put everything in the, its own little bus. So I did like a lead bus. I did the chorus lead bus. I did her verse leads. Um, I put all her backgrounds in one individual chorus bus. I used the compressor and I, I used this Pultec, which is like a, a really high quality EQ. Some fat filter to cut out some of the low end there to complement, use some subtractive EQ. Something I really like to do is um, use natural phase. So if I have multiple, uh, as I add multiple um, VSTs on top of it, it doesn't add a those millisecond delays. And if it does, everything stays in phase with each other. So I add that natural phase to all of my um, tracks that have EQ. This is just uh, tuning. So I use Metatune, Auto-Tune does the same thing. Now I kind of switch my approach with reverbs. I'll put a reverb on its own individual bus. But for this one, I just put it on top, just Lexicon. Then I think I added another EQ here, just cuts out even more of the lows and boost a little bit of the highs and then a stereo shaper to make it wide for the backgrounds. So I'll see if I can play that. Actually, I'm not gonna be able to play it for sure. Let's try it, let's try it. play just her vocals here. Oh my god, computer's definitely freezing already for it. Yeah, that was a mix for the vocals, uh, specifically the backgrounds right there. The lead is a little bit different. I wanted it to, to come out, be a little bit brighter. So I think I just use on the bus, just the vocal to push it up front. I use a preset vocal forward. This is by UAD. UAD has native um, plugins now. So you're not, you don't have to have a, a UAD, a, uh, like a Apollo or anything to run their, their, uh, their plugins. And they have a subscription base, which is pretty dope. I use Pro MB to, for the de because the S's were really sharp on her uh, track. And I cut it down to where the frequency range was. And it's just kind of like a, almost like a multi, it is a multi-band compressor just happening and ducking out those frequencies. Um, and since I took out a little bit of her, of her S's here, I wanted to hone in and EQ and push back up a frequency range I took out a little bit. And then just a slight tuning on her lead vocal here. So it's just really just... EQ and uh, DSing and a little bit of tuning for the lead, not too much verb. The verb is left for the hook, so it feels bigger. This one has a slight, this is the lead chorus, has a double vocal effect. Cutting out the lows for the most part and just a basic compressor. The compressors, you're kind of using it to, 
if there's points of her track where it sounds very quiet and there's points of her track sound very loud, you're trying to get it all even and having it uh, one sound, one consistent sound with the compressor. That's kind of the the target with that. Um, let's see if there's other parts of her track. Just admit it. Damn, I think you're a fan. So that was her, her reference, and I like that she had like kind of that almost like a chorus on it. I think I included that within her actual vocal. Yeah, I added like a galaxy tape echo effect that gave it a little bit of depth. And you can hear that in her, her in her verse, I think. Looking in the mirror like nice. nice. You can't make me cooler, I'm ice. Yeah, I shine rarer than diamonds. Naming my price, I'm calling me priceless. Stepping up, feeling my best. This, this place... We also did like a little bit of uh, automation for certain parts, like this verb right here. Love to see me cry. You don't understand. That makes you a fan. So when she say that makes you a fan, we cut out the verb to give it like a dry vocal effect. You you hear that a lot right now going on. It's like a trend right now with vocals. I've, I've noticed is like these little effects that are making it sound with a lot of reverb and a lot of delay, and then they cut out. And they automate it out so it sounds dry on certain lines. It's okay, just admit it. Damn, I think you. So that's the basis of like how I like to st structure songs for sync. Um, I have a couple other examples too. I can go over maybe a different time or a different part too, but I wanted to kind of come on here and just break down that entire process of how um, I think songs are, have been working for sync. I think songs are a good way to get into sync live sync right now. If you're someone who's struggling to tap in, um, definitely working with artists, just finding artists who out there who you align with, uh, creatively and just working with them. I feel like it's important. Uh, and, and if you can't like, I know like the beat selling, you know, beat selling right now is a thing and stuff like that, but finding an artist that you, you hear on Instagram or TikTok or something, they don't have a, a huge following. You think that you have. Uh, you know, the the tracks that would really fit their style. Don't be afraid to DM them and message them and and try to work with them and let them know your intention. Hey, I'm pitching songs for Sync Live Sync. I would love to work on a track with you. Or going on if you have a little bit of credibility and you have a little bit of uh, credits and stuff like that, going on sites where you see artists listed, messaging messaging those artists and and asking to work. There's a lot of artists out there who are just hungry right now who are who are really uh, looking to work like Jay Josephine, uh, Easy McCoy. All these people are in Sync Live Sync already tapped already tapped in have really good relationships and are just constantly working uh Daraj, another person who's really good uh both like epic rap epic hip-hop type of raps um tapping in with those artists and just collaborating on music and making moments that's what we're going for keeping that authentic artist driven feel to the song so just a tip hopefully that helped out and uh if you guys have any questions let me know so you bust out just background vocal. No, I bust out everything. So everything has a, its own bus. The lead vocal has a bus. The chorus has a bus. Uh, th its own bus, because there's layers to it. Like she has a, a left right layer. She has a double layer. It looks like. Sometimes she has harmonies. She has post chorus. She has uh vocal ver like doubles and stuff like that. And if you get stems and you're mixing the track, like you be selective with the stems that you you use. So sometimes. I'll get tracks like I got a track where they added background vocals to the every part of the, the song. And I thought that the song would feel bigger at the end if I cut out the background vocals at the beginning and just use them at the end. So you could be creative of how you want to structure if you're mixing it yourself. The mixing takes time. This is like the second track I had mixed in like years. It had been years since I mixed a track. Many years since I missed a, a vocal track. I've been doing artists, but trying to explain how sync licensing works is difficult to them. How so? Like the business side? What's up, Adonisia? Is it Adonisia? Adonisia? How's it going? Yeah, how so? How how? What part of that are you struggling with? If you were watching for the song structure, that pretty much wraps up everything with the song structure. Ironically enough, the program FL Studio just crashed. But if you have any specific questions, feel free to put them in the chat below. 
but that is it with the song structure. We could do like a Q and A now, if you guys want. Have any questions? I've been DMing artists, but trying to explain how sync licensing works to them is a bit difficult. I wonder what side of it, like the 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 business side, are you struggling with specifically, or like explaining them the whole entire process? Because I noticed no more artists are becoming tapped in now. Producers, I think since COVID, have definitely started to, to turn and get more familiar with sync licensing, but now I feel like they're seeing a lot more artists tap into. Nija? Uh, Nija. Sounds like Elijah. Okay. Guest list records. You missed the first half. I will have this replayed up so you can watch it back. We just broke down song structure, the intention behind certain decisions. Um, why keeping your music broad is important and how it's relatable to certain moments within scenes and films and, 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 and TV and stuff like that. Set up a call with them, Charismatic. Set up a call. Get more comfortable with calls. That's what I'm trying to do with myself right now. Like right now, I'm, I'm tapping in and reaching out to a lot of music supervisors and stuff like that, more music coordinators and it's uncomfortable for me sometimes just to, to ask to set up a random call with a stranger. But if you if you really believe in them and you really think that they align with you creatively, set up a call. It becomes more personable. I appreciate that. I appreciate that. I'm glad it's helpful, Don. Really helpful. Uh, while we're while we're waiting for more questions to come in. I'm going to go ahead and start dropping some more resources that I've been finding on my venture of uh, building out this library. I've been documenting kind of the process or sharing the process, whether if it's on Instagram or on here. And uh, something I found yesterday that might be helpful to some of you artists and producers. If you're trying to kind of submit and pitch on your own. Let me make sure. Let me make sure my window's good. All right. Do, 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 do. That was the song we just went over, Fan. There's this LBB called Little Black Book, which is really dope. And I don't even know if I should be sharing it. Nah, that's cool. They have this, uh, this is a site called Little Black Book, and it's more towards advertisement. But what they have on here are different companies within advertisement. So whether they're doing music, whether they're music supervisors or production companies, all within the world of... Uh, Advertisement is here. So if I go down here. You can see all the different companies. You can filter it based off if they're uh, production companies, do brands for advertising, advertising agencies. Uh, not every single one filter is like live, but it's cool when you click on some of these companies. They have articles. They have their type of music. Uh, so for some of them, for the ones that do music. So like if, if I do like a music supervision company, I'll go to music and sound. I've been to, doing like cold outreach right now to some of these companies on here. Just like it, it's perfect because a lot of times when you reach out, let's say to a company, even if it's a music library, music supervisor, whatever it is, you want to do your research on them. You want to take the time to research anything you can about them. Cause you're, so you're not just sending an email saying, Hey, check my music and copying and pasting multiple emails. You want to make sure that you just have a little bit of intention when you're reaching out to them and just showing, Hey, like, you know, I'm not just sending you a copy and pasted email. I took my time to study you and that stuff works out. I'll, when I was at uh, the Gilded Music Supervisor Awards, I knew a lot of music supervisors that were there because of me just studying the game and watching their podcasts or watching interviews with them that I didn't even notice in those moments that there were going to be really good segues to to approach them. Like, hey, you know, I, I checked out your podcast that you did on this, blah, 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 blah. I checked out your episode. I really like that you mentioned this. Or, hey, there, there was one supervisor who uh, uh, has his own production library as well, and he had um, a really cool, unique name. It's called Fort Clarington, and he works on uh, Love Island. But he has his own sync agency called Fort Clarington. And I was like, yo, you have one of the best – and most creative music library names out there. And he's like, hey man, appreciate it. We just had a, a, a cool conversation after that. that. That's good, like segues, but just being able to uh, have a, you know, an actual real conversation. But anyways, 
these companies have like news and stuff like that. Really helpful articles, really helpful articles on here. Like almost every single company you see on here has some type of article that's resourceful that you can just read and, and learn from. They show some of their work, what they worked on, some of the commercials or whatever, uh, credits, and then you can see their about, their contact, you can see their website. I wouldn't just email this or just call the number. I would actually research who's in charge of what, who does what. That way I can get familiar with what they do and see if they align with what I do. Music composition and sync, like all that stuff is on here. This is a really dope site that I found. Might be helpful. Astro Control, what's up? How am I doing? I am doing well. Can't complain. Is Super Selective planning on pitching any cinematic TV music? Um, we have some cinematic stuff on our catalog. I can show you. It's pretty solid, too. But we definitely could use more. I think Shane was in here. I don't know if Shane's still in here. He has a really good track in here. This is more hip-hop based, but still. It's a really good one, too. really good tracks there yeah we don't i don't really do uh like trailer i don't pitch for trailer houses but uh we do carry cinematic tracks for sure how many tracks should one have before contacting a library depends let's do some research here we'll do it together atrium music is one library let's go with uh we could just do super selective keep it easy we don't have to overthink the process. So first of all, let's say you're reaching out to Super Selective, which is my library, if you didn't know. A lot of the times what people just do is they see my site right now, they go down, and what they'll do is they'll contact us directly on this contact page. They just, they're just scrolling, they see this contact page, they just, they just direct, they contact us directly on here or here, I think. Right here. They'll contact us literally directly right here and ignore this part, which I know is small, but every library has their own submission guidelines. So you can click this form and you can see, boom, we already have a whole thing set up for you to submit. Now, I'm, I'm not going to lie. I am lagging on submissions for sure, just because I have so much going on right now. But there is definitely uh, a lot of submissions, but I've, I've been getting back to them slowly but surely. But some libraries tell you how many tracks to submit. So if you submit um, with ours, we tell you maximum five tracks. So the safe spot is three to five tracks only. I don't want to like exaggerate or like kind of not exaggerate, but um, overextend this explanation. But three to five is a good guideline. But every library will tell you. Like if we go to Atrium Music up here, it says submit music. And we look send no fewer than 10 individual songs. So if somebody tells you you have to send 10 songs every single time, that's not the truth. Every single library changes and varies. It's going to depend on the library. There's no set number. But the safe spot is 3 to 5. Now, if you're sending directly to a music supervisor, the safe spot is 10. If you're sending directly to a music supervisor, the safe spot, you can send up to 10. If you're sending directly to a music library or a sync agency, look on their site. If you don't see it listed, three to five is the safe spot. What type of music has been trending in business? Uh, that's a it's a it's a loaded question because you don't necessarily always want to trace chase trends. What I've seen more specifically in reality TV right now is uh, there's a sh there's a show called White Lotus on HBO Max, and a lot of people have been asking for comedic uh, tension or comedic music, comedy music that has that. White Lotus feel. White Lotus has like a lot of vocal chops and stuff like that in it that ha have like almost like a, it almost feels like islandy or like 
a little bit. I don't know. It's very hard to explain, but if you listen to the references, you'll get a good idea. Um, as far as other styles, music for TV is usually one to two years behind. So uh, like funk and all that other stuff is doing well. Um, Afrobeat right now is doing really well. Afro pop, especially as well, is doing really well. If we is it cool if we share our IG on here for sure. If you guys want to network, please go ahead. I will open up this channel for you guys to network. Any so uh, suggestions on song and intro link? Um, I definitely recommend you going back at the beginning of the stream after it's done if you want. But I always recommend four to eight seconds max being the intro, unless you're building out a song that's like, uh, you know an emotional clim uh, climatic just uh ending title outro type of feel right like a, a long just building track that intro is going to be obviously a little bit different but for the most part i say four to eight seconds like you want to get immediately within the track you don't want to build out a 15 30 second intro um for contemporary music like pop hip-hop stuff like that still here shane i appreciate you yeah that track you have is solid Shane, what tips do you have with this sync live scene? Because you are established, have good relationships. I always see you on LinkedIn and a lot of different communities on, on Instagram too as well. If you have any tips that you would like to share for anybody who's a musician at this sync, let me know. I think uh, Shane is our utility musician, very reliable. Is it a red flag if all of the credits on the library's page are from several years ago? Not necessarily a red flag. I mean, it just it depends. Like, if this site looks super dated and just super old, I'm talking like 2006 and before, then that's possibly a red flag because you want to know if they're still actively pitching out, if they're still actively getting placements. And at the same time, like, if I'm a library, unless they have a super set in stone relationship with like a big company and they don't really have to worry about outreaching and getting new clients because of the amount of frequency they're getting from that one or two clients that they work with is enough. Then a lot of the times you'll want, you'll see libraries want to make sure they look presentable and update their cat, like catalog, update their website, look a little bit more presentable. Sometimes it could be a red flag, but it's not always the case for every single library. It is like a good, a good, uh, stepping stone to just be like, okay, maybe I may, may not want to spend so much time on this one because maybe they already have established composers or maybe they're not actively pitching out. Um, I guess, I guess it's like an open ended question there. What's up creation? How's everybody doing? Yeah. So it, it could be, it could be, I know people have mixed reviews on that, but it just depends on the library. Um, this site that I showed you guys too, a little uh, LBB online has some libraries on here too as well. But an easy way to find music libraries, I think I went over this last time, is to go to PMA Music. We can go to their uh, music catalog prefix. And we could just search all these libraries I have on there, just do our research. Now, I mentioned this last time. A lot of the times, these are the biggest library, bigger libraries that sub publish out smaller libraries or have smaller series under them. So maybe I'll attach. So pay attention to these parts of it, but you're not pitching directly, let's say to uh, APM Music. You don't want to pitch directly to them. You want to see their sub libraries and research them and see how you can reach out to these, some of these companies. Some of them may be active, some of them may not be, but there's a ton on here. If you guys are beat sellers, you may recognize a name on here who's on here for sure. A lot of these guys don't want to be telling you they'd be working on sync and Odomini has his own little sub library on here of just his music. So there's different uh, different libraries and even composers and stuff on here. Production Music Association is a resource for production music libraries. I didn't even show my screen. Dang. My bad. Here, let me go back. I want to hear production pma music.com i went to the music catalog prefix i was just showing you the different libraries and then i typed in anno domini so shane says be polite be humble write 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 
be responsive and honest. That's a good start. That is very true. All very valuable information. Thank you for sharing that, Shane. I think that is solid. Yeah, this is a good site to get started researching. But I also said this little black book has a, you could just go to home here and then we can search production music. It should show some of them, I believe. Boom. This is like, if I was, if I was trying to get in with the company and let's say it's a library on here, I would look at these articles. I would see, Oh, what's this about this production music library? They linked up with this other library. They linked up with the diner. I would read this article. You could use chat GPT, summarize our article if you want. Email that company and let them know if they have email submission, email them and let them know, Hey, I really enjoyed uh, reading the article about your recent collaboration with the diner. If you're reaching out to felt music and let them know, like, I, 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 you know, I would love to submit music. I noticed on your catalog and research the catalog, what type of music they have. And see what they have. I think this is the wrong site. Felt music production library. There we go. Felt music production or production music. I'd research their library. I will listen to some of the tracks they have. Do they have vocals? Do they not have vocals? Which it looks like they have vocals. Listen to what they have. See what they lack in. So I can be like, oh, I'm a hip hop producer. I don't see a hip hop album on this. Let me search. Hip -hop. I make hip hop funk. Or just make funk music. Easy keyword. Do they have stuff? Oh, they do, but it's barely anything. Do they have Afrobeat? I can make Afrobeat. Oh, they have 47 Afrobeat tracks. What about Afro pop? No results. I would reach out to them. Hey, I recently read your article. Really enjoyed seeing that you guys teamed up with the diner. I know it was a year ago because this article, I'm pretty sure is a year ago, but wanted to reach out and pay homage. I'm a music composer who makes Afro pop music. I looked on your site and your catalog. Noticed you guys had Afro beat, but didn't have any Afro pop. Here's a uh, three to five tracks. I would love to submit for your preview if you guys are currently accepting submissions and that's like an email you can send out network appears to work I didn't know you were in the UK nice when people give advice it sounds like they're mostly talking about producers or artists as a composer with submitting to libraries is it better to include three to three to five genres or still one I can't give you too much advice based off of just a straight up composer. Cause I, I know that most of the times composers, if you're trying to get into a library, the same thing applies. You're just showing different aspects of what you're really good at. But a lot of the times composers are scoring directly for projects. So like scripted TV series or indie films or films. So your approach is going to be a little bit different. There's a pretty solid tutorial on YouTube from this composer who shows you how to um, find different indie films and stuff through IMDB Pro, and he has a pretty in-depth tutorial on it. Let me see if I'm IMDB Pro. Let's see if I'm logged in on here. So this is IMDB Pro, and you, you would just be searching uh, the movies in pre-production and reaching out to the director showrunner producer go to indie film festivals like the approach for composers is a little bit different if you're going to a library directly you rather just work with them directly the same thing applies you just you can send a couple different genres but don't send five genres uh like try to keep it pretty consistent and send like maybe two genres of three to five tracks or you know whatever it is but you can go directly on here obviously the bigger movies are at top but there's a lot of results now, the ones at the end may not be the results you want. If you go to the very, very end of this, you'll see just like movies listed that have no info that somebody just put on here. 
but try to find the indie movies that are on here. Go look at you know Sundance and the different film festivals that they have. There's a ton of them. And your approach is almost like a music supervisor's approach. Music supervisors who are trying to tap into sync licensing and they're working on the freelance aspect. Try to start with indie films. And when you're getting first getting started, you may not get paid a lot. Um, but you're just building relationships. You'll never know where someone will end up. You never know who the person is going to be 10 years from now that you work with. So the approach is a little bit, a little bit, I guess, flexible. I've talked to composers. Uh, I talked to this composer named Ken Jacobson, who works on a lot of different stuff. And he said that he's always composed. And he's always worked on like films and stuff like that. But he started realizing how useful it was being into different libraries. That's why you see like Hans Zimmer has his own library and stuff with uh, I think extreme music, right? So doing both is definitely beneficial, but I would focus on one first and then work on the other. I think with the stream music. Yeah, Ham Zimmer is with extreme music. It was one of the most prolific composers out there right now. And he has his own catalog within extreme music that is like his production music library stuff that he sends out and then he also composes directly on projects so that's how your approach if you're a cinematic orchestral composer differs from just a regular producer or artist just do your research it takes time well, something you can com combine with imdb pro is rocket reach to get emails so you can look up look up some of these you know people that are working on this, these projects and see if their emails listed on Rocket reach or, you know, find their socials or whatever and try to reach out to them. Dope. We got any other questions? If not, we'll wrap up the stream. If you tuned in late, I recommend you rewatching the beginning where we broke down the song structure, had FL Studio open, we broke down everything. Um, hopefully it was helpful. Wait, so being a part of different libraries is actually beneficial? 100%. When I first started out, I was loyal and committed to one library and I only submitted to them after I started to submit it to other libraries I got way different opportunities I wasn't having with that library that were working on completely different projects completely different shows and just opening up a different channel of revenue for me so I think that is definitely beneficial working with a couple you can work with like two to three I think or whatever really works for you I know Shane works with a couple just having your assets in different areas is beneficial for you, but don't don't do it to a point where it overwhelms you and you can't commit uh, to these libraries. Um, just make sure you're you're you know you're someone who's a go to person and uh, uh, dependable, very much so dependable. All right, guys, if we have no more questions, we'll wrap it up there. More than three? I mean, yeah, if you wanted to. If, you, if you're not getting a lot of action from one or two, do it. If you feel like it's overwhelming, then don't. But you could definitely do. There's no set limit of libraries you can be in unless your contract states otherwise, which I would not recommend signing. All right, guys. I'll catch you next week. Hopefully next week we can do a... I'm pretty sure I'll be able to do a song critique. I'm not 100% sure, but I believe we'll be able to do one next week. Oh, no, I'm not going. I'm not in 10 plus. No way. All right. You guys have a great weekend. I'll catch you guys later.